one of my uh, uh, biggest drum like heroes or influences, Uli Kush played mm-hmm. played also yeah. on your Symphonia yes. album. How how did that came to be? I Colton? think Matos was first. I mean, him I asked him the first because right. he was living in Sweden. And then I think it must have been through Edel, the record company, got me the number. No, because he was in Norway, so Yari knew him, the bass okay. player. Yeah, Yari knew him, and so he asked that 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 was the connection there. Right. So it clicked really easily. Everybody was same, at least in the same continent, Scandinavia. Yeah. Right. So I figured if the Brazilian guys in Sweden, the German guys in Norway, and me and and Harkin, <laughs> Yari was also in Norway. So me and yeah. Harkin were the only one who were in Helsinki. Right. At least everybody's in Scandinavia, so it's easy to get them to Helsinki to record. Yeah. Stuff like this. I mean, the, the sessions were so easy with him. I mean, there was no reason to edit even, nothing. It was yeah. totally in grid. Yeah. Just some some um, difference of opinions in the ballads, because he played some triplets. Okay. And I said, this is not accepted. Yeah. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't have this man. And yeah. It was like a joke, actually, for him. Okay. <laughs> you, you have a joke. <laughs> it's like triplets in the ballad. Okay. Yeah. And he was a funny guy. He was a. He, I remember it, it was in Sweden in Vargberry, some studio. We recorded those drums, and yeah. it was big room. So I put the same thing. I put a lot of room mics in there. Right. And then he was very, very picky about the monitoring his cans that I remember. Especially yeah. kicks and had to be like yeah the, the right way. balance exactly the right but right it was like a little bit more ten yeah. percent more of the right yes and and it does really make the difference. Ah, yeah yeah of course I understand yeah. yeah so he um it was a funny guy I remember that right yeah. and then no problems whatsoever yeah but he had this idea that he doesn't want to play anymore because he was I guess he was tired of playing in the shitty places and touring so he was just wanted out at some point. You know? yeah. he, made, he played the record, no problem. And then he just didn't want to go on tour. Okay. He just didn't want to do that. Anymore. Yeah. So I understood. And I think he's working on a factory or construction site. All right. I don't think he plays anymore. Okay. He yeah. chose this. Yeah. Way. He was amazing, like kind of like this machine gun drummer. Yes. Drummer. Like he could, you can actually kind of hear on the some of the Halloween albums, like he's feels some things. It's just kind of like a exactly. controlled madness, but with really good taste. Yes, excellent. I mean, he was really, really sharp, really, really straight, and, and really easy. Yeah, true professional. Yeah, so cool. No problems. Yeah, and I think he also wrote, wrote some songs in the Better Than Raw album. And, yes, uh, he wrote. He writes songs too. Yeah. So. Dark Ride, and he told me to write uh, like a, a song which is based on a Celtic. Melodies. He had, okay. he told me to. Do, so I wrote this okay. Pilgrim Road. That's that kind of. Okay. It's his idea. Like he told me verbally. Right. And then I said, yeah, because those translate those Celtic melodies translate easily to crowds. They like they like that stuff. There's something okay. in that, you know. Okay. So I wrote that song. What were your thoughts basically about about Halloween? Like, uh, have you been listening to them a lot during your time? So yeah, listen, I I I I saw them live '87 in Giants of Rock. With, with right. Dio and it was Keeper One, yeah. And then I saw them with Keeper Two supporting Maiden in Ice Hall. Right. And when I heard Keeper One, I I I was surprised because I never heard that kind of stuff before. I did was really creative and brilliant. Yeah. Those melodies and the drums and everything. So it's big influence for me. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think they are the originators of what they call power metal. Yeah, I think like a, I would say so too. Exactly. I mean, with Stratowars, we took it further with a different kind of classical vibe. You know? Yeah, it's different in that sense, but of course, it it really pays tribute to Halloween in many ways. Yeah, I really like the production, especially of the. I don't know. Did you listen to the mm-hmm. Halloween's Better Than Raw album? It Not. Like, I haven't been listening to Halloween for a long time. Yeah. actually. I mean, I, I stopped when Kiska left. Okay. Yeah. That's basically much. when I came in exactly. and started listening. Yeah, yeah. That's completely different kind of. Yeah, it is. I do like. Modern. I do like Time of the Oath. Yeah, I, I like album. the songwriting, but I don't yes. like the sound. Yeah, I don't think that is sound sound wise. That's not the great, but but then like okay, songs are great, but then the better than raw to me, the st- drum sounds and everything, all yeah. the playing. I think also Kush did like a uh, quite a few songs right. there and really like epic stuff. Like if you should check it out. If I you like haven't. this Master of the Rings drum sound a lot. I think yeah. that has a really nice high end uh, analog sound. Yeah. yeah, and great. That the new one doesn't have. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the new ones I haven't been basically. I think at least to me when Krapov and Kush left, to me something started a bit missing. I see. Okay. I mean, again, it's only a, it's really about the songwriting. How good are the songs? Mm, yeah, of course. Know? It doesn't of really course. matter that much, but of course, how the fans hear the songs. I mean, that's the key. And then, yeah. of course, Keeper albums are masterpieces. I mean, they, they yeah, are they really, are really good. I mean, so for that, of course, I mean, f- friend of mine talked to Tommy Newton who produced those keepers. Okay. And and he was telling Kiske that you sound like a Fiat in the morning that doesn't start. <laughs> <laughs> so he he said that Kiske got pissed off about the comment. Yeah. Uh, he never heard him before, so he's like, okay, that's that's vibrato. It sounds like yeah. Fiat in the winter morning. <laughs>